you're watching Universal Groove, we have Bobby Arosa here in the house, uh, all the way to, from Finland. <laughs> it's, a, it's a crazy uh, late night here in California, Pacific time, but over there, it's a nice morning, uh, nice day over there, I'm sure. So, but I, I just want to start off with saying, like, you know, I got into Bobby Arosa's music, and what really attracted me is he's got like this 60 sound, he's got like this oldie sound. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just quality stuff. Uh, it's very emotional music. And I think a lot of, you know, people respond to his music because it is very emotional in some cases. And it really just brings out that heart and music. And then it has very good visuals as well. So I'm very excited to have Bobby here. So again, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I want to start off with, you know, where were you born? I was born here in Finland and, uh, yeah, to to a mixed mixed uh, background but yeah i was born here and i was born and raised here as well yeah is there a particular city that you were raised in yeah it's the capital it's the it's helsinki the capital and uh even more particular it's a certain area of the city that i kind of spent my most of my influential years so to say so that's pretty much where all the where, where a lot of uh, immigrants would uh would live and so it's a very uh, culturally mixed neighborhood uh this is where i actually i just moved back with my with my own family now so i'm still stationed here nice and what's the atmosphere there so is it like a rough neighborhood you said it's a capital so um you know what's kind of the atmosphere in that area it depends on the on, on what you kind of relate that, that that to but for me it's, it's been getting a lot better you know it's cleaner i think that that's what pretty much happens like everywhere cleaner but what i what i enjoy is that there's still this a little you know this vibe that's a little bit you know vibrant i would definitely not say dangerous i, I mean people uh, you know people have these ideas about about this area of course but uh most of people who don't who never actually been here or you know felt felt the amount of love and connection that you know there's between people i don't know because uh finland can be a very kind of you know, even before the pandemic and it's like a very socially distant society in a way so um, just just a modern modern you know very technological society and so on so what, what i enjoy in in my neighborhood is there's still this uh, very vibrant vibe you know things happen and there's always you know you can see life around you you know something i enjoy so you have a few different backgrounds right and you have you speak a few different languages as well can you talk about you know what languages you speak and what your background is as far as ethnicity well my dad's norwegian uh finnish swedish dude and then my mother's bolivian uh bolivian finnish so uh yeah that's my background and i i would speak my mother's uh, native tongue is, is uh spanish as well so we would uh we would speak spanish with my Tios uh, Tias, all of my family. So that's uh, that's one I think very kind of strong. And it's weird what happens when people they kind of come come over here, you know, on the other end of the world, and there's this uh, kind of force that forces you to to kind of somehow maintain your culture and pass it on to the next generation. That's what happens. So so for me, I, I kind of relate with that uh, uh, immigrant feel. So a lot of my friends also were from, you know, their parents would be from, you know, wherever from North Africa or East Africa and, or, or South America. And we would just be, you know, Finnish kids, but with this background. So, yeah, that's a, that's a strong part. And then there's this Scandinavian vibe kind of, you know, even my, you know, my little sister, she, she speaks Swedish, uh, Finnish, uh, Spanish. And uh, also, you know, Danish and uh, Norwegian. So there's this Scandinavian vibe as well. But yeah, that's my background. It's very, you know, I don't have a very, you know, strong uh, feeling of, of, of belonging to a particular, you know, nationality or a particular ethnic group in, in a way. So I'm just, you know, an odd, odd bird here, you know. A little bit of everything, a little bit, a little bit of nothing. <laughs> so you were, you had a different name though. You were born, you weren't Bobby Arosa, right? You you had a, a different, a different name uh, when you were born, correct? Can can you tell us that name? Yeah. So my full name would be Boris Herluf Nordin Orosa, 
which is uh, so the I was actually born with uh, uh, having Orosa in my name, and then uh, that's my mother's name. So I, I just you know I'm using my father's name, but then uh, uh, like officially most of the time. But I I, I love having this part of me kind of you know uh, that I can present through through my music and my artist per persona, so to say. But uh, yeah, so then just Bobby is just something that everybody would always call me Bobby or Bobby for I don't know maybe because I was so much into <laughs> into into soul music or whatever. But then people started calling me Bobby you know, very early on, and then the Timmy and guys they would just we were thinking like how when we when we're gonna put out the, when we're about to put out the, this love song, so they were kind of brainstorming on what my what my stage name should be. And they were like, ah, it's there, man. It's there, man. It's just, you know, Bobby Orosa, it's, uh, that's your name. So, yeah, that's it. Now, your mother, she was like a, a, a teacher of music, right? As well, as well. Yeah, yeah. She's actually, she's uh, doing research at the moment. But yeah, she would, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, my families, they would uh, uh, do kind of myriad of uh, different dispositions in, in, in music. I mean, to do music and culture. But yeah, but now she's doing research on on uh, indigenous music of of women of of South America, of more particularly Bolivia. So she's studying the Cholita culture and uh, you know how we, indigenous women are empowering themselves to to their own kind of businesses in music and so on. It's it's very interesting. Yeah, but she would uh, they would also perform a lot, you know, and then teach as well. Yeah. And then your father, he's a jazz a guitarist and musician as well. So uh, can you talk about him a little bit? Well, th well, that guitar that I, you know, that you saw me playing throughout the show, it's, uh, that's his influence, I guess. It's, uh, he, he would kind of present me with, uh, with this beautiful library of, of jazz, you know, music that, that still kind of, I mean, I still have the same records. I'm just, you know, uh, it opened uh, a beautiful path for me. I kind of... And you know, even like very specifically, Django Reinhardt, the European uh, jazz manush, gypsy jazz legend, kind of just uh, opened my eyes to the possibilities of guitar and how you can find your own tone and how you can find your own language and that. So yeah, but uh, yeah, he was also like uh, just you know, he was playing in different bands and he was playing, in, for example, in. Uh, this was my, my first official kind of band gig was when I was 14 or something. And then uh, my dad was playing in this, uh, like pretty, a big orchestra. And the idea was that they were from all around the world, but they were centered on Senegalese uh, musicians. So my dad's best friend was this Senegalian old dude now, he already, already passed, but uh, he was a beautiful person. And also kind of a torchbearer or over here of his own tradition of, of Senegalese, uh, uh, music of the griot tribe you know this kind of so i, I kind of yeah and they, so they my dad was playing first guitar there so he was like ah we can you know he's ready i mean he's not ready but you know he can we can you know take him in, in as well so he learned so i learned so much from that project and uh, i don't know my dad would just always kind of uh, indirectly just push me into you know some directions perhaps and give me opportunities in that way, like very naturally, not even kind of making, you know, <laughs> a point out of that, but just like, maybe it's also, I was cheap, you know, if he needed somebody to, you know. <laughs> I want to talk about just how powerful that is as a family, being in the business, um, you know, performing. I mean, does it give you a lot of, you know, self-confidence in that? Like, hey, this, you know, my family's doing this. Does it make it easier for you to become a musician naturally? Well, I'm, I'm sure. I'm quite sure. I, I mean, I wouldn't know in a way because it's, it's just the reality that I, that I was brought up in. But uh, I mean, there are all definitely also like uh, downsides to that, I guess. But uh, because everybody's working in the business and it's, you know, it's not the most stable kind of business, not the most, uh, you know, predictable business. You know, there's uh, there's always this hustle going on in a way people traveling, people moving around, uh, things happen fast, people work late and, uh, you know, there's sides to that. But uh, but all I can say is that it's, it's you know, it's my it's my profession, I, it's my way of life and now I'm bringing up my own kids into that, you know, <laughs> so I'm just... You know, the circle is kind of, no, I don't know, it's a, 
it's a good way to spend this life. I love being on stage. I love being in the studio. I love uh, I love communicating with, with with people in that way. You know, Durgan, it's it's weird. I, I just enjoy that. You know, when you're on stage, like in that Santa Ana show, it's it's uh, I don't know. You feel the energy of so many people at once. I'm, I'm kind of uh, addicted to that feeling, you could say. I feel it. 